Hello again and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Modern Glory video. In today's episode, we are going to be asking and answering one simple question. Is Lord Solar Leontus an auto-include in your guard army? Many people's gut instinct is going to be, yes, of course he is. He's an absolutely fantastic model that brings a huge amount to the table. And I would struggle to disagree with that. However, I personally do not believe that he is an auto-include. And in certain circumstances, he's actively going to take away from your list and disadvantage you. I know a crazy, bold statement, controversial in the extreme. But you know what? I'm going to have to back this up. So without further ado, let's ride our robotic horse and dive right into today's episode. Now, the first thing that I want to do is make something abundantly clear. The Lord Solar is not a bad unit. Actually, he's very, very good. And most guard armies are going to benefit from including him. He brings a hell of a lot to the table got a good stat line he's got fantastic abilities he gives you extra cp you can redeploy several units and he does three orders and he can order anything in the guard so things that don't have squadron or regiment can still be ordered by him that's like abhumans and guard super heavies for a lot of guard players putting him into the list is going to give you a fantastic force multiplier however he is not an auto include and just automatically instinctively just shoving him to the top of your list every single time is a mistake every unit in your army should be carefully considered and you should be making sure that you're getting the most out of them if you end up just putting stuff in because the internet said that it's good then what you might end up finding is your army doesn't have the fundamentals in place and it doesn't also synergize and homogenize well units especially in the guard should support each other and you'll find that sometimes a unit that people say is an auto include like the lord solar is actively going to hinder the rest of your list it's not that it's not going to do as much it's actually going to take away from other areas that you could have invested in firstly we're going to look at infantry guard now this could be pure infantry or it can be mostly infantry you might have some artillery in your army your vehicles might include things like basilisk and manticores but by and large you are focusing on having a really, really strong and expansive infantry core. On the surface, you might think that the Lord Solar would bring a lot to this style of play. Firstly, you would get more orders into your army. That means that for 125 points, you can get three orders. If you compare that to something like uh, a Death Corps Marshal or Platoon Command Squad, which will cost you 180 points to get three orders, then it seems like a no-brainer. On top of this, Pure infantry guard armies tend to use a lot of CP on the reinforcement stratagem. So the extra CP coming in from the Lord Soul is going to help you get that strat off. At least that's what it may look like on paper. In reality, it's a different story. Orders are very important to infantry guard, but officers need to be bringing more than orders to the table. They need to act as a force multiplier to the unit they are leading. A Death Corps Marshal may only do one order, but he's only going to be leading one unit. He doesn't need an extra order. And what is as equally as important is the fact that he brings that five plus feel no pain to the table. That makes the unit that he is leading so, so much more durable. And that allows you to move on to objectives in the middle of the board and not only that, but hold them. A big problem that Guard has had for addition after addition is the fact that you can take the ground, but you can't hold it. Death Corps Marshal solves that problem. He helps you take and hold the ground, which allows you to start accumulating those primary points in subsequent turns. Likewise, Command Squads not only bring a six plus feel no pain to the table, which does a similar thing to what the Death Corps Marshal does, but they also can increase your objective control with the regimental standard meaning that pretty much 
every single infantryman in the squad they're leading needs to be wiped out before your opponent has a chance of taking that objective from you. Sure, you might have the command squad and two blokes left from an initial 20-man blob, but that is still going to be six OC from the squad, from those two guys, because they're three OC each, and 10 OC from the command squad. That's 16 objective control. Your opponent would need to have 17 Terminators on that objective to be able to contest it, or take it from you, I should say. So the command squad is bringing to the table another sort of pseudo element of durability. The fact that your opponent can't just shatter your units, they have to wipe them out. Otherwise, again, you're going to dominate on that primary objective game. As for the Lord Thor's other abilities, well, the extra CP is nice, but it actually doesn't have a big impact. If you go first, you'll gain your command point, you'll save it, and then you'll go into your opponent's turn and you'll gain a second command point. If they wipe a unit out, you've got two CP for reinforcements. And really that's the only stratagem you're gonna use as a Bureau of Duty Commander. If you go second, even though you've got the Lord Solar in your army, you don't get the bonus CP until your turn. So you still only have one command point. If your opponent comes flying in and wipes a unit out early on, Lord Solar hasn't protected you because you still don't have enough CP to get reinforcements off. Then you go over to going to your turn, one, and if you've got the Lord Solar, you've got three CP. If you haven't got the Lord Solar, you've got two CP, but either way, you've got enough CP for reinforcements. The extra CP the Lord Solar gives you is a nice to have. You might be able to get a command point reroll off here or some other stratagem off there, but Actually, we don't want to be spending 125 points on a unit that gives us a nice to have command point. I tend to find bonus command points like that should accumulate naturally. It's a bit more efficient that way. Let me give you an example. If in battle round one, you lose a squad, but you're able to spend your two CP to bring them back, great. You should have the same again for battle round two, and you can always bring those guys back. But let's say you get lucky or your opponent's army isn't really focused on smashing you early on. You get to the end of battle round one, and you've not lost a unit. You haven't had to use reinforcements. Brilliant, you've now got two CP in the bank. When it goes into battle round two, maybe you can be a little bit more ballsy, because you know by the end of that, you will have accumulated four CP. That might allow you to use reinforcements twice in one go, once in your turn, once your opponent's turn, or once in your opponent's shooting and combat phases. Point is that, You've still got all the CP that you needed for reinforcements. And even if you only end up bringing back one squad back, you've still got those two extra CP that have just accumulated naturally. It hasn't affected your plan in any way. And now you've got a couple of CP you can be frivolous with. But all the Lord Solar would do was exacerbate this. You might end up with three or four CP that you've got nothing to do with by the end of Battle Round 2. Sure, you could do things like Fields of Fire, but... Why wouldn't you just take Creed, who can let you do that free? That's more valuable, because that means you've got reinforcements and fields of fire for 55 points, rather than 125 points for buying the Lord Solar. Finally, you get to the redeploy, and in an infantry army, often you don't have room to redeploy, because you're going to fill your deployment zone, and even if you take some squads from the left and try and bring them over to the right you might not have the room to do that and if you swap them over then all you're doing is swapping things over and not having any big impact you could put stuff in strategic reserve but infantry is kind of cheap enough that you can easily put everything you wanted to put into reserve from the beginning anyway you could try and do some kind of cheeky bait and switch some kind of oh i'll have them out of the open and then i'll redeploy them into reserve or somewhere safer you you, you could do that but I tend to find that guard infantry armies want to start with as many bodies on the board as possible because you're trying to push as many units onto the objectives as early as possible. I have found that when my opponent puts a lot of stuff in reserve against my infantry guard, I'm kind of mentally rubbing my hands together with glee because I want as many bodies on the board 
from the beginning so I can push on the objectives as early as possible. If my opponent has got lots of reserves, that's giving him less firepower to stop that initial infantry wave. So you don't need the redeploy to go into reserve because you try and take all the objectives possible. If you use reinforcements, you're going be outflanking people anyway because they're going to strap reserves they can go on come back in from other board edges and you often don't have the room to start rearranging units anyway attention guardsmen this is an announcement by the departmento munitorum element games is an official sponsor of the modern glory channel they offer up to 20 percent off warhammer 40k and 10 percent off full action and other game systems use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Full out! Now that covers the infantry, but let's go to the other end of the spectrum, the motor pool, armoured and mechanised guard. Here, it would seem like a no-brainer. The Lord Solar could order three tanks. Just include him. It's easy peasy, right? Many armored lists will benefit from him, uh, especially those running super heavies. But some are not going to enjoy having the Lord Solar. And that's because he is more expensive than he looks. 125 points for three orders is a good deal. But the Lord Solar doesn't cost 125 points. He costs close to... 240, 245. And that's because you have to take into account the accoutrement, the infantry squad, the platoon command squad that need to combine with the Lord Solar to make that supreme command blob so he can do his orders out to 24 inches. Because without that combo, he's galloping around able to do orders within six inches. That's going to make him very visible. And it's going to make him an easy target to get picked off because he hasn't got lone operative. 240-ish points can get you quite a lot in a guard armoured list. It could get you three chimeras and change. It could get you a Lehman Russ and a Sentinel and probably some change. <laughs> you can get quite a lot for it. But the main thing is that he's not the best way of getting tank orders into your list. If you're taking a mechanized or a armored guard list, one that's going to have a lot of vehicles in it, you're probably already paying points for things like Lehman Russes. You're probably already going to have at least three Russes in your army, probably way more than that, especially in the armored route. In that situation, you could spend 240 to 245 points on the Lord Solar. Or... You could spend 90 and get four tank orders. Because the average cost of a Lehman Russ is about 180. If you take demolishers, it's 200. It costs just 25 points to take a Lehman Russ battle tank and turn it into a tank commander. So you can take three of those for 75 points. Then you take the Grand Strategist Enhancement on top of that for 15 points. And there's your 90 points. It's a 90 point upgrade on tanks you were already taking to get more orders. I think this is a really good example of how automatically chucking units into your army can make your list way less efficient. Because if you go down the upgrade tanks to tank commander route, which at most is going to cost you 90 points more. If you were taking demolishers, it might cost you 30 points more because you take three demolish tanks five points extra per one to tank commanders and then you put on the enhancement as well but let's assume that you weren't taking a crap load of demolishers and let's say it's going to cost you about 90 points to upgrade upgrade those vehicles to tank commanders that is a 155 point difference between taking a lord solar in an infantry squad and a platoon command squad. That's an extra piece of armor in your list. That's an extra Lehman Russ Vanquisher. If you've got a couple of the points spare from your list, I know whenever I built an armor list, I always seem to have like between 10 and 15 points left over. That could get you something like Lehman Russ Eradicate to help. You might even be able to get an extra Lehman Russ Battle Tank just from the points you've saved and the points you had left over at the end of your list. That is more tank in your list and it's more orders in your list at the same time. 
And that covers just a few examples of guard armies that don't really benefit from having the Lord Solar in them, and in some cases are made less efficient. But let me reiterate, he is a good unit, and in most guard armies he's going to be adding a lot to your force. The point of this video is not to suddenly make you not like the Lord Solar, it's kind of to just remind people that each unit that's put into a list should have a purpose and you should make sure that you're not just putting them in because you've always included one but you're putting a unit in your army because you're making sure you're getting the best bang for buck and a unit that whilst on the surface might look good in all situations may not be appropriate for the style of list you are building. I do know that a lot of the armies that I've used in examples there are somewhat specialist, although I would push back on that slightly by saying there's plenty of guard players out there that have armoured companies and very mechanised forces as well. I would also just want to acknowledge a point here. Some people uh, might be confused by this video because I did one towards the beginning of 10th edition that said the Lord Solar is an auto-include. I do stand by that video and I would say in hybrid guard armies, ones that use a mixture of tanks, infantry and artillery, the Lord Solar is very, very good and you are going to get a lot out of him in that army. And at the time of recording that particular video, that was where my focus was with the guard. I hadn't quite started delving into the meme lists for, uh, for the army instead. I was actually very much looking at these combined arms forces and every time I was running one, the Lord Solar was hugely benefiting the force. So I hope that you guys can see this as more of a progression of an evolution, of a refining of my attitude towards the Lord Solar from when we started 10th to where we are now. Of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Have you been including the Lord Soul in every single one of your armies or have you been exploring lists without him? And if so, have you noticed much of a difference? Of course, if you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and as always, subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney thank you guys so much your incredible generosity is a massive part of how i'm able to do more do glory full time and it is a big driving force behind the channel but i hope you all enjoyed today's video thank you for watching and of course as always i'll see you guys next time